Well, as you know, nitric oxide has been around since decades. It is a gas which our body creates. Basically, the blood vessels create nitric oxide, formerly known as vascular uh, endothelial relaxation factor. It's one of the components which is responsible for the elasticity of the blood vessels. So, as we age from age 30, 40 on, we lose our own production in the body. So that leads to the fact that our blood vessels became stiff. So nitric oxide as a gas, we as cardiologists have used that since decades, in particular, for example, during open heart surgery. So I'm a transplant cardiologist. When we do heart transplants, for example, oftentimes we combine nitric oxide with oxygen in the ventilation tube during the surgery, in particular with patients with high pressures on the right side of the heart to lower the pressures in the lungs because the nitric oxide opens up the blood vessels. So having said that, it is a vasodilator, so it's a substance which basically opens up the blood vessels. So the interesting thing about using nitric oxide is that recent data, in particular a review which was published just a few days ago from, I think, uh, George Washington University showed possible benefits for the pulmonary function, meaning the lung function. And that has or might have at least some positive impact in patients who contracted coronavirus. So um, having said that, I would like to defer further discussions on nitric oxide to our colleague and friend, Dr. Nathan Bryan, who is considered the godfather of nitric oxide. He's a researcher and he has done extensive basic research and clinical research work on using nitric oxide. Uh, thanks, Dr. Schwartz. As you, you hit some really important points on nitric oxide and I think it's, it's important for your audience to know that it's more than a vasodilator. In fact, it's what's responsible for the delivery of oxygen to all cells in the body. So when you become deficient of nitric oxide, not only do your arteries become stiff, you develop high blood pressure, sexual dysfunction, pulmonary disorders, really every age-related chronic disease is associated with loss of nitric oxide. And that's really become apparent in this age of COVID. We're six or seven months into this, and we've realized several important facts. Number one, that people who show symptoms of nitric oxide deficiency you call them comorbidities, such as hypertension, diabetes, sexual dysfunction, pulmonary disorders. Those are the people that are more susceptible to infection. And those are also the people that once they get the coronavirus, they progress really rapidly to hospitalization, ventilation, and death. So in fact, every single condition that puts people at risk for COVID infection, as well as the rapid progression of disease, all relies on the production of nitric oxide. So our thought is, and the scientific literature supports this, that if you restore your body's production of nitric oxide, not only has nitric oxide been shown to inhibit the coronavirus replication, but you basically mitigate the side effects of the coronavirus, such as the blood clotting disorders that's becoming more apparent, uh, the sudden death, all the so-called systemic disease that occurs from the coronavirus infection can all be explained by nitric oxide or insufficient nitric oxide. And it goes further than that. The health disparities of uh, many medical or of many uh, ethnicities, including African Americans, can all be explained by lack of nitric oxide production. So the important point, the take-home point here is, and there's a number of clinical trials now being uh, conducted using both inhaled nitric oxide and some other nitric oxide technologies, specifically in coronavirus patients. And I think the important point we need to remember is, if if you give nitric oxide at the right time, at the right dose, early in the disease process, uh, by all bets, you can basically mitigate the, side, the adverse effects, hospitalization, ventilation, and death of all coronavirus patients. And we know that people who are healthy and good immune system, good cardiovascular system, they don't get sick from corona. It doesn't mean they're not exposed. They just don't get sick because their immune system is very robust. They're able to generate nitric oxide, mobilize the immune factors, increased perfusion circulation actually kill off the the virus so to me vaccines aren't the answer i think therapeutics are very important um, but nitric oxide is the key to fighting this coronavirus pandemic 
Thank you so much, Dr. Nathan Bryan, for your insights, as always, from, from the godfather of nitric oxide. I, I think it's very interesting to keep in mind exactly what Dr. Bryan just mentioned, that, of course, we are all waiting for the vaccine, and uh, the vaccine is a, is a big step, of course, to create immunity among the population. On the other hand, like Dr. Bryan said, Keep in mind, uh, the flu vaccines are not a 100% protection. So besides waiting for a vaccine, we still as physicians have to do everything we can to improve our own immune system, to improve our pulmonary function, our lung function, our heart function. So that's where we come in basically with therapies, with different medications or different supplements to improve the oxygenations in the lungs and the other organs. And at least from a positive point of view, we can say, even though we see more COVID patients now in the hospital than we saw, for example, two months ago, there, there is a little shift in the age distribution. Right now, the majority of the patients admitted to hospital with COVID in California are actually under the age of 40. And fortunately, these are more younger people and the younger people usually have a better outcome in particular because their lung function is better, their heart function is better than someone who is 75 years or older. So we have the lower risk patients, <clears throat> which doesn't mean that they cannot die also because we all have seen young people dying, including many physicians and many nurses who took care for patients. But we have to do more than just waiting for a vaccine. We have to treat them aggressively to protect the lung, the heart, and the blood vessels. Thank you.